idea for a short story. Right, I'm Mitch Resnick. Mitch Resnick? Yes. So it's nice to meet you. Are you the ones who've been working on on the for this with the Samsung? Yes. Ah. Yes. You've learned how to share from one to another. In the past, people have been able to create in many different ways. You create, you know, paintings, and you could you know, create music on a piano. It's partly because of technology that things have speeded up so much, and the, that we're in such a fast-changing society. Many computers are used simply to, you know, browse and chat and play games. And there's nothing wrong with that, but I don't think that's what's really gonna, going to prepare people uh, to be successful and happy in today's society. I think people are going to be most successful if they learn to design, create, experiment, and explore. And computers, if they're used the right way, can expand our abilities to design, create, experiment, and explore. It provides multiple types of creating. About 15 years ago, I helped start an after-school center for young people from low-income, underserved communities. We called it the Computer Clubhouse. It was a place for young people to come and to learn to express themselves creatively with new technologies create their own videos, to create their own music, to make robotic constructions. And one thing we saw there was that kids loved working with media. But there were some things that kids wanted to do, but there weren't the right tools for them to do it. They wanted to create their own games, create their own interactive stories, make their own interactive animations. So we saw a real need just from seeing what their interests were. They wanted to not just interact with new technologies, but to create their own interactive technologies. That's what led us to create a new piece of software called Scratch, which is a free piece of software that kids can just download uh, to create their own interactive stories, games, animations, and then share their creations on a website. So it's in the spirit of YouTube, but instead of sharing your videos, you share your, your own interactive stories and games that you've created with Scratch. You can do great things, uh, complicated projects, we're trying to you know, set up so that we'll make it easier for the player to be able to, to coordinate the motion of the person and the ball. Because he's making the ball go to this character. But where on the character should he go? So he's saying the ball should go to the place on the character that he was just setting the place where the, where the ball should go. We're always taken by surprise by how kids use it. We knew that kids would make some games. But they started using Scratch in many ways we never imagined. You know, there was one girl in England that she made a project and loaded it to the website that it wasn't a story or a game, it just had a series of characters, animated characters. And she put some notes next to it that said, I don't like to make games or stories, I just like to make characters. If you like my characters, please feel free to use them in your stories and games. If you want a different character, write a comment below and I'll make a character for you. So sure enough, there was a girl in Russia who liked this artwork and said, I'm making a game. Can you make the character for my game? And they started working together. Before you know it, there were about five kids working together across three countries. They were making games together. I was a bit bored of making projects myself, so I decided to make a company to make some with, with others. I guess I'm most proud of a project called Wodun's World. It was this kind of like fake talk show where my little avatar would come on and like I interviewed the little scratch cat icon and I, I made that like a year ago. I get about three comments a day asking if they can be on Wodun's World. We've taken a lot of our greatest inspiration from the way children learn in kindergarten. Kids are constantly creating things together in groups. They make a tower out of you know, wooden blocks. In the process, they learn things, what makes things stand up or fall down. They learn how to think creatively and work collaboratively. We know people have to become lifelong learners now to continually learn new things. Partly we need to break down many of the barriers that exist in today's education system. The different disciplines are separated. You have a math class, a science class, and a language class, a social studies class. We want to sort of bring a lot of the different disciplines together. I also think we should be bringing ages together. 
It's also great if a 10-year-old interacts with seven-year-olds and shares their experiences with them because we all learn when we help other people learn. All of education is finding the right balance between freedom and structure. Sometimes people have the misconception that creativity means you don't need any structure, and that's not true. A lot of the best creativity comes when you have the right type of structure. We often say that the, most, the three most important things you need you know, in today's society is to be able to think creatively, to be able to reason systematically, and to be able to work collaboratively. Uh, I think if we can help support people to learn those three things, they'll be very well positioned for, you know, today, for life in today's society. We want to empower everyone to be able to invent new opportunities for themselves.